do you know what he's different syndrome is? If you don't, I'm about to let you know. You, if you're this person or you have a friend that they meet a guy and every guy they meet, they're like, he's different. He's different. No, seriously, he's different. And either your friends, if it's you, they're looking at you like how, or either you got that friend and you looking at them like how, how he different. He looked the same to me. <laughs> he looked the same, just in a different body to me. Yo, party people, it's Ashley of SingleWomanChronicles.com, where being single is a beautiful choice rather than a miserable circumstance. And today's episode is brought to you by my books, How to X Your Ex, A Guide to Getting Past Unhealthy Relationships. It's time to end the agonizing cycle of unhealthy relationships. Most people struggle with breakups because they just don't know how to start the healing process. How to X Your Ex is a step-by-step -step guide on moving past unhealthy relationships. Renew your strength and find happiness again by walking away from relationships that no longer serve you. Start fresh by exing your ex. Learn how to stop the overwhelming thoughts of your ex, get rid of the feelings of regret and shame, eliminate the crushing feelings of rejection, be at peace with your decision, be hopeful that there is better out there. You can get How to Ex Your Ex right now at Amazon.com as well as Audible if you don't really like to read, books on Google Play as well as Apple Books. All right, so today we are going to talk about what impresses you. The reason I even came up with this topic is because <laughs> I was thinking back to the days where I had he's different syndrome. Do you know what he's different syndrome is? If you don't, I'm about to let you know. You, if you're this person or you have a friend that they meet a guy and every guy they meet, they're like, he's different. He's different. No, seriously, he's different. And either your friends, if it's you, they're looking at you like how, or either you got that friend and you looking at them like how, how he different. He looked the same to me. <laughs> he looked the same, just in a different body to me. And what happens is when you're impressed by shallow things, you feel like everyone's different because you don't know if someone's different in the first few weeks, few days of like meeting them. You don't know until you put time in. If you see that they're consistent, you really try to read the situation. You're really trying to get to know them. But if you have he's different syndrome, you're impressed. You're easily impressed, period. You're easily impressed. And I get it because I've been there. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I had he's different syndrome real bad, like so bad. A guy, anytime a guy did something nice for me, it could be the smallest thing. It could be the barest of the bare minimum. I'd be like, he's different. I had, a, he's different syndrome out of this world. I'm talking out of this world. But I want y'all to overcome that. And y'all can overcome that by recognizing what impresses you and learning to fill the void because usually we're impressed by things that we don't attain ourselves. So back in the day, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I was, I was basic. <laughs> like I can't even lie and say I wasn't. My mindset was basic. So I was impressed by cars. I was impressed by nice houses. I was impressed by, you know, guys who could take me out, spend money on me, like do all of that kind of stuff. I was impressed by it. No, I'm not saying that that's something that you should ignore, but it shouldn't be something that you are so impressed by it where you're like, oh my God, I have to have this person because I'm impressed by their status and whatever. Like, you know, I would put, I would, if I had encounters with celebrities or like the popular guy at school or the popular guy in my city, I would put more energy and feelings into that because I was easily impressed by things and materials. The reason was at the time I was broke <laughs> at the time. I didn't have it like that at the time. I also didn't value myself at another level. Like I, had low self-worth. So I felt like if I attached myself to the people who have this high status, this popularity, this money, then I will feel more worthy. And them paying attention to me gave me a feeling of worth. So you have to identify what your void is in order to realize like, why am I impressed by this? 
what's missing in my life that's making me so easily impressed by things that shouldn't even be that important? Like, come on. And when you're easily impressed, people can peep that. Like, that's why in Atlanta, okay, so I always say dating is hard in Atlanta, not necessarily because there aren't a lot of men to choose from, but the culture is different. The culture here isn't a settled down culture. The culture here is F chicks get money. Like, it's flashy. We outside. We having fun. We smashing everybody. We doing this and we doing that. Like, please don't. I just thought, <laughs> this is such a random thought. But I'm like, I hope don't nobody get on Beyonce's internet and edit that part and just show that one little clip where I'm talking about we smashing, we doing this. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know how the internet be. They'll take one clip out of context and blast it all over everywhere. And then I'm over there over here like, ooh, she said that she's celibate. Ooh, she said she's supposed to be this. Whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know why that thought popped in my head. But y'all know how I be out here in these streets. But anyway, so <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. Um... Shoot, I lost my train of thought. I feel like I'm going to have to go and rewind this to get my train of thought again. But yeah, back to what I was saying. Atlanta, the culture here isn't to settle down. It's not to fall in love and live happily ever after. It's very like men lead with money, women lead with sex and their bodies and their beauty. And so what I've noticed is a lot, because that's the culture, a lot of people adopt it. So you'll notice that men, even if you're not on that type of time, like me at this age, at this big age, I'm not easily impressed, especially not by no money. I'm impressed by men who love God because that's rare. I'm impressed by men who are emotionally intelligent and go to therapy because that's rare. I'm impressed by men who um, are grounded because that's rare. Like I'm impressed by rare things like, and most of the things I'm impressed by involve character. It has nothing to do with the physical things because the physical things like that just don't impress me to, no more. Like at my big age of 33, I'm just not impressed by that no more. But in Atlanta, I've noticed that people have adopted, they know the culture, they understand it. So they're like, okay, if I get a lot of money and I drive the nice cars, then I can impress these women. And me, women feel like, okay, if I get the BBL, or if I get the long bust down weave, and if I get my nails done, if I look the par, I can get the dude with the money. So <laughs> everyone's easily impressed by the physical things. And a lot of people are faking it until they make it. It's a lot of men who ain't got no money, but they got really nice cars. A lot of them are homeless, <laughs> but they're flexing. Because they know that if you're a basic chick, you're going to be easily impressed by these material things. And he can do whatever he wants with you. He can convince you and you be impressed and you fall for him and he can just run game on you. Women out here who may have the BBLs or or may have the nice body, may be beautiful, but some of them, they're really just trying to get taken care of. Some of them are homeless. Some of them, you know, they be on vacation every week, but they're not paying for that. Somebody else is paying for that because they got the look and they're using their looks in order to impress these men and run game on these men. It's happening on both sides, right? <laughs> but the key is to not be easily impressed by the material and the shallow things. And again, the only way to do that is by recognizing whatever void you're trying to fill and filling that void with things that are outside of people. So for me, having low self-worth had me very impressed by material things because I felt like I needed the rich guy to get ahead, but also not finding value in my talents and my gifts. I think a lot of people, when you don't see value in what you can do and what you can bring to the table, you'll fall victim to that crap. That's why so many black women out here doing it for themselves, starting businesses, going to school, like out here really hustling because we are tired of feeling like we need somebody to provide us with nice, fancy things. I don't need your status if I have my own. I don't need to be impressed by your money if I have my own. Like, I don't need to be impressed by a vacation if I have my own. The best thing 
a father can do for his daughter when raising her, her is, and mothers as well. Like, if you don't have your father in your life, mothers can do this as well because it comes from both sides. But if you got both sides of that coin, if your daddy telling you this and your mama telling you this, then you going to be... You gonna be out here like you gonna be so uneasily impressed. <laughs> like ain't nobody gonna be able to move you or convince you or persuade you. Like your mind is going to be strong. The best thing a family can do when raising a child is make sure they get enough attention so they won't be attention seeking and easily impressed by a lot of attention from a guy. That's why it's easy to love bum certain women. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I wasn't even gonna get into this, but I've been love bum several times. And I fell for it several times, even though it happened bike to bike several times. If you don't know what love bumming is, it's when someone comes into your life and they put a lot on in the beginning because they're trying to get something out of you. It is a manipulation tactic. It's like when someone comes in day one and they're just like, oh my God, you're the best woman I've ever dated. You are so amazing. Like, I just really want to take care of you. Like, I feel myself falling in love with you. And it's like the first 24 hours, you're like, yo, bro, chill out. <laughs> like, but you can fall for that if you're easily impressed by that, if you've lacked attention in your past. Growing up, I didn't get a lot of attention. I did it because my father wasn't there. My mom was a single mom, busting her behind, trying to take care of two kids by herself. Um, I was bullied. As a child, uh, I was a nerd. Like, I did not get a lot of attention. So when I started to get a lot of attention, that would impress me. So being love bombed, that was giving me what I needed because the void was attention. Attention. I had attention deficit. We so, talk about mental health a lot. But are you taking charge of your mental health journey? You already know I talk about going to therapy and how my therapist snatches my edges all the time asking me questions that I would have never thought to ask myself, asking me questions that I've pondered on for years. <laughs> but I want that for you. I want growth for you. I want the best version of yourself because the only way to reach your goal, your potential, your destiny is to become the best version of yourself. And let that begin with therapy. So let's start with Talkspace. Talkspace has a promotion right now where you can get $100 off your first month. All you need is the code SPACE. Yes, S-P-A-C-E, SPACE. Click the link in the description box to get Talkspace right now today. Let's start 2023 off right. We out here. I already told y'all we out here. So get it right now. Click the link wherever you're listening Spotify, Apple, it's in the description box, even YouTube. Get it right now, $100 off. Like, $100, that's a lot of money. Y'all better come get this. Come get this therapy. Come get this so, therapy. So, of course, I was easily impressed by attention. So, people listening to this, if growing up, you didn't get the, enough attention in your household, maybe you were the middle child, Maybe you were an only child and your mom and your dad didn't really have enough time to give you the attention you needed. Maybe you were bullied. Maybe like these things happened to you. And now you find yourself constantly attracting and attracted to people who love bum you and then give what they want and leave. Learn how to fill that void of attention. How you can fill that void is, I mean, for me, y'all already know God is my savior. Christ is my savior. Like I prayed a lot. I went to therapy. I filled up those wounds because... It was necessary. Like, I think also getting to the root of why you want the attention, like on the hierarchy of needs, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, a sense of belonging is actually on there. So it is human nature to need to belong, to need attention, to need to feel seen. So never be mad at yourself because you need those things. We all need those things. Every human walk on this earth, even the little dusty humans that try to tell you you don't. <laughs> like, it's a lie. You need those things. Those are necessities for us to live a fulfilled life, okay? So you have to, one, just identify and let yourself know, like, it's okay to need those things. It is oh freaking K to need to be reassured, need to be reaffirmed, need to belong. It's okay. And so if that's something that you've dealt with, it's, it's okay. And just learn how to provide yourself with that attention. 
um, and learn how to pay attention to the people around you who are actually giving you that attention. Because I know for me, like I ignored the great friendships that I had because I wanted the attention from men so bad. And because I wasn't getting it, I was sad and thinking like, oh, you don't get the attention. But then I had to go back and be like, bro, you got a great family. You got great friends. Like pay attention to those connections that are giving you what you actually need. So yeah. So if you're easily impressed by attention, it could be because like in the past you didn't get the attention that you needed. It could also be that you went through a relationship that broke you. Like you went through this relationship where in the beginning you were very high in self-esteem. You got the attention you needed from your your family, but then you got into a relationship with somebody who was probably manipulative, probably a narcissist. And they basically ripped you of all the confidence you had, self-esteem you had, and now you're trying to get back. I had a blog, um, I think I took took it down, but it was called I Found Love But I Lost Myself. And in that blog, I just talk about how like sometimes the wrong people can come into your life and they can strip you of the love that you have for yourself. So it's ve be very careful about the people you allow to come into your life, okay? Thing number two. Um, if you're easily impressed by money, status, things like that, it's probably because you, you grew up, you grew up not, you grew up in poverty. I grew up like that. I grew up poor. You grew up poor and now you feel like the only way to get out of your struggle is through someone else. But you have to understand that you can save yourself. You can save yourself. Like God is not <laughs> a person who just picks random folks. He literally will bless anybody. If you put the work in, you got to trust God. You got to put the work in. You got to be obedient to the process, but he can bless you too. The dreams that you have, they are possible. You don't need somebody else to bring that in, like to, to bring you out of your struggle. You can do it yourself. You don't have to be easily impressed by things and material. And also the material things don't guarantee you're going to have a great life. It's several rich people killing themselves like all the time because money doesn't solve your lonely problems, your broken problems, your, you know, all of that stuff. So you still got to heal. You still got to be whole. You still got to develop a sense of worthiness outside of things, outside of tangible things. Like your worth has to come from in un, intangible things, untangible things, whichever that word is. And you have to find it from within. It sounds cliche, but it is so important because it is people walking around here who are millionaires, but they feel like crap and they are depressed and they are using drugs to numb them every single day. And, you don't have to go through that. <laughs> like you really don't. So even in your season, like if you're in a season of drought where you feel like, okay, I don't really have it right now. I feel like I'm gonna be in this season forever. One, it's a season. Seasons don't last always. And two, cultivate value within yourself that is not attached to physical things in this season. So that when you get to your next season, when you ball in that, it's just added that you're grateful. You don't, you possess things, things don't possess you and you can just really enjoy it fully and be gracious and grateful in that season instead of feeling like these things make you. No, don't take hold of things. Don't let things take hold of you. Um, three, if you are easily impressed by the services that people do for you. What I mean by that, um, one of the things that I was easily impressed by as well was if a guy did nice things, like if he took my trash out and I didn't ask him to, if he walked my dog and I didn't ask him to, if he, um, if he fixed my flat tire and I asked him to, if he got a boot off my car and I didn't ask him to, I was impressed by those things because I didn't think, I'm trying to find the words, um, because I was just so used to dating bottom of the barrel Negroes that 
I hadn't seen much. So I really would love for parents to instill in their daughters, like taking them on vacations, even if it's small, like just taking them out. Even if you take your child to a, a McDonald's or something like take them on a date, show them um, what nice treatment looks like. So they won't look at, look for it in somebody else. Um, so bare minimum won't impress. Like when you're used to getting below bare minimum, the bare minimum impresses you. That's the word I was looking for. That was the sentence. Yes. Okay. I, growing up, I didn't really, you know, we didn't, we couldn't afford vacations. We couldn't afford, you know, Chick-fil-A honestly was a big deal in my home. When we could afford Chick-fil-A on a Friday, like that was a huge deal because I grew up poor. So I was easily impressed by the bare minimum because not only, you know, did I struggle getting that growing up, but I also struggled when I started dating these busters and they were just doing bare minimum stuff. And this was more so in the beginning of my dating when like I couldn't figure it out. Another thing, side note, um, I'm biased on this because th this is just how I grew up and I, this is what I wish would have happened differently. My mom was very paranoid because she got pregnant young and she thought that like I would follow in her footsteps, but I was so opposite from her. I would, I took pride in my virginity. I did not want anybody to have it until I graduated high school. Like I was very like big on that, but because she was so scared of me following her footsteps, she didn't want me to date like ever. I didn't get to actually date until I was like 17. And I feel like that hinders a lot of people. Y'all got to stop doing that to girls. Y'all got to stop waiting because what's going to happen is they're going to get to high school and college and they're just going to be bumping their heads. Y'all, I was stupid, okay? I was big dumb. I was gorgeous. Just body is just on everything. Like, I'm, I'm cute than a mug, but I'm dumb than a mug. I'm green than a mug because I haven't experienced dating. If you can put your child in the environment where they can experience dating, but with your um, instruction under your house like I'm not telling you to just let your child just be out here grown but like if they're 13 14 and they're telling you okay I like a boy because you know y'all be doing like boys can date at 11 but girls gotta wait till they 14 15 16 it's ridiculous so I'm saying like if a girl comes home and say I like a boy Okay, let's set up a play date with the parents. Let's talk to the parents. How can we all go to the movies together? How can they hang out? If they come to the house and they studying, yes, you got to be in the living room. No, you can't be up in your room with the door closed. You can't even be up in your room. You got to be in a common area. Like, start putting game on your child as they are growing. So when they get out here and start dating, it's not a deer in a headlight. You know what I mean? Like, you got to be honest. You got to be real. My cousin, um, which is somebody I look up to, my cousin, she has a daughter, and I love the way she raises her daughter. She is very, like, direct with my child. She's like, I'm direct with my child and their friends because they know to come to me. And my cousin was also a social worker, so, so she knows, like, the psychology behind this. But she was just like, you got to be honest because if you're, you're honest with the child, you won't have to take this authoritative – um, this authoritative method and trying to force them not to do things. If you're honest, they're going to see the buffoonery for themselves and decide not to do it. You know what I mean? So I, I really feel like if you show your child, okay, a man is supposed to open the door for you. He's supposed to be a gentleman. He's not supposed to force you into sex. He's not. If you are honest with them and you tell them and you give them game, they won't be easily oppressed when they, um, e easily impressed or oppressed when they get out here in these dating streets because they already gonna know. So me being green made me easily impressed a lot too because I just didn't know what to expect because nobody talked to me about it. Like nobody. I had a big brother and a mama. Nobody talked to me about it. So I literally was just out here being dumb, being easily impressed. Guys being nice to me. Oh, I should be impressed by this, right? No, no, this is bare minimum stuff. This is just, you come to work on time. You work your hours, you go home. That's bare minimum. When you stay in longer, you coming in earlier, you helping them and then some, that's when you're impressed. You shouldn't be impressed until a guy gives you and then some treatment, okay? And then some treatment is 
sending flowers before the date and flowers after the date. After the date. Now I'm impressed. And then some treatment is, you know what? Let me plan this date fully, but also I'm going to reach out to your homegirls and stuff and see what you really like because I want to be so intricate with this date planning and I want to give you everything that you want. I'm not going to assume nothing. And then some treatment, okay? <laughs> and then some. I'm opening your door and then I'm bringing you flowers. You know what I mean? So be impressed when it's and then some, just not bare minimum. Bare minimum stuff is not, girl, I'm faithful to you. No, that's what you're supposed to do if we committed. No, no, <laughs> no, sir, okay? And then some treatment is, okay, babe, I know you've been going through a lot. You've been stressing out. You you going crazy. Let me book you this massage because I know you stressed. Or let me walk your dog um, for the next two weeks or let me keep him so you ain't got to go out here so you can just focus on your focus like and then some treatment everybody and then some treatment is a little bit different so you have to know your scope but don't be just easily impressed by things I would love to recap everything I just said because I know it was profound but honestly I just feel like God was speaking through me because I can't remember all the stuff that I said so y'all just might have to rewind it I hope y'all was taking notes but I feel like this is a very important um, podcast and you need to share it with some people. And y'all also need to subscribe, like, and share. You know, I got a lot of great ratings on Apple Podcasts, so I greatly appreciate y'all. I have no ratings on Spotify, so if somebody's listening to this on Spotify, please give me a rating. That would be great. That would be wonderful. But hopefully I help some of y'all out today. We're not easily impressed in these, these streets no more unless it's and then some treatment. Okay? All right. So until next time, bye.